In Matthew chapter 5, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says that he did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And in previous videos, I've talked about how this meant Jesus came to be the perfect interpretation of the law and fulfill it through his life and his ministry, and how the scribes and Pharisees had incorrectly interpreted the law over the generations to make it become something it was never meant to be, and how they had missed the essence of the law that God wanted them to get, and they had made it so legal legalistic in nature. Jesus began to go down and correct it and saying, you have heard it said, but I say unto you. So you've heard this incorrect interpretation, but I'm telling you the correct interpretation. And a lot of times it's actually made the law harder to follow to the Jewish people. When we get down to Matthew 5, 43, he starts talking about loving your enemies. And he says, you've heard it said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same. And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Or non-believers. Do not even the Gentiles do the same? Therefore, you must be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. I want to talk to you about this today and how Jesus taught us to love our enemies, how not to look at others with contempt, with spiritual pride and self-righteousness in our heart. See, with all the incorrect interpretations of the law, they had begun to define who was their neighbor. You know, this is why the parable of the Samaritan was so shocking to so many people because the Samaritans, no, we don't have anything to do with them. Just the same tax collectors and prostitutes were put on the same level. We don't have anything to do with these outcasts, with these sinners. But remember, Jesus said, I didn't come to the righteous, but to the sinners. So they looked at these people with contempt in their heart, these dirty sinners, and they taught people, we don't even have to love these people. These are not our neighbors, and they were choosing who they wanted to love. You see what I mean? So Jesus is coming along saying, you know, what good is that? Isn't that what everybody else does? It's easy to love those who love you back, but I'm telling you to love the ones who spitefully use you, the ones that hate you, the ones who persecute you. When it comes to looking at others with contempt and self-righteousness and spiritual pride, this parable just sums it all up so perfectly. The Pharisee and the tax collector in Luke 18, 9. He also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and treated others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, prayed thus, God, I thank you that I'm not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even lift his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but the one who humbles himself will be exalted. What's amazing about this is this is actually translated, the sinner. I am the chief of all sinners, like Paul said. In order for us to fully appreciate this parable, we need to understand how the Jewish people at the time saw tax collectors and why they hated them so much, because they actually were extortioners. They actually were unjust. They actually did rip people off all the time. They would charge you more than you owed, and they would pocket the rest, and they would get rich off of it. They didn't keep the Jewish traditions and laws, so they were often seen as unclean. And there was this big stigma around tax collectors, and they were considered amongst the sinners, amongst the prostitutes, amongst the worst of the worst. And you don't want to be anywhere around them. You don't want to be associated with them, and you want nothing to do with them. And this was amongst the Jewish people, and this is how they saw them. So this Pharisee goes in, and he's praying in the temple, and he's saying, God, I thank you. I'm not like this dirty 
sinful tax collector that everybody would agree with is this dirty sinful tax collector and then he lists off all these reasons why but then the tax collector who truly has a repentant heart says he wouldn't even lift his eyes to heaven but he beats his breast and this is uh the greek for beats his breast is a continual beating it wasn't just once but he's just like really hating himself hating what he has done and really feeling uh remorseful for his sin and dirty and gross for his sin and he says god be merciful to me the sinner the chief sinner i am the worst i am the scum of the earth i'm the worst of the worst and i know i need your mercy and i know i need your grace i know i can't earn it i know i cannot do it on my own and what's jesus say i tell you this man the tax collector went down to his house justified rather than the pharisee for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled but the one who humbles himself will be exalted so it doesn't matter the social stigma it doesn't matter how bad you are it doesn't matter what you've done and what everyone says when we humble ourselves before the Lord and say, God, I know what I did. I am repenting. That's called repentance, guys. I'm turning from that. I've changed my mind. I'm seeing that your way is better. Your way is the only way we are justified in that place by what Jesus did on the cross. This parable is such a beautiful picture and summary of grace and just reminds me of what Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not of your own doing. It is the gift from God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. Furthermore, last thing, and then we'll close the video. This, this story has always spoke to me in a unique way. Jesus and Zacchaeus, he says, he entered Jericho and was passing through. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, and he was a chief tax collector and was rich. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd, he could not because he was small in stature. So he ran out on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to that place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He has gone in to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I've defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house since he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. Guys, this is a picture of the saving grace of Jesus. Hopefully these stories hit a little bit harder. This is what the Word of God does and why I get so emotional when I read about the person and the man that Jesus was, that He truly was God in the flesh, and He came to seek and save that which was lost, that He didn't come to the righteous, but to the sinner and to the outcast, because I am that outcast. And He's teaching us as believers, we have to remind ourselves that if we're going to be Christ-like, if we're going to follow in the steps of our Savior, that we have to love our enemies as ourselves. Remember, it's love God with all of our heart, mind, and soul, and love our neighbor as ourself. Who is our neighbor? It's all people. All people are our neighbor. But sometimes when I forget what Jesus has done for me, and when I get in this place of self-righteousness, and I start to look at others with contempt, I can be like the people who grumble and say he's gone to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. See, when Jesus shows up and we're just in the presence, he doesn't have to come and say, oh, you dirty tax collector, you dirty sinner, you've defrauded people, you've done all these people wrong, you should be ashamed of yourself, you need to repent right now. No, what did he say? Hurry, I'm coming to your house today. When the perfect presence of Jesus shows up in your life and shines that light in our heart, we see everything that is wrong and we begin to repent before the Lord when the presence of God comes 
comes, when that perfect standard shows up in our life, all of that junk starts to push out. And how does he respond to the presence of Jesus? Zacchaeus says, Behold, Lord, half of everything, I'll give it to the poor. And if I've defrauded anything, I'll restore it fourfold. He starts repenting because Jesus said what? Repent, you sinner? No, because Jesus said, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house. And you have to understand the significance of going and eating at someone's house. That was to um, suggest partnership with that person, friendship, camaraderie with that person. So these people were grumbling, why would he go and eat with this dirty sinner and tax collector? And I have to repent saying, God, forgive me. Some of us and myself included get frustrated when we see the grace of God and the mercy of God be extended to someone that we don't think deserves it. And that's very convicting to me. And it might be convicting to some of you. And I wanna encourage you to walk in the footsteps of our Savior that that same mercy and grace that God extended to you and I, He plans to extend to all that will say yes to Him, all that like the Pharisee and the tax collector, all that will humble themselves before Him. He says, yes, come into the family. So my friends, may we guard our hearts from that spiritual pride and self-righteousness that would try to keep in, that would cause us to look at our brothers and sisters in Christ with contempt, that might sin differently than we do, that we would be reminded that we need the mercy and grace of God every single day. We don't want to be like the Pharisee who thinks that we are righteous because of our own good works, but it's by what Jesus did on the cross that we are justified. We need that mercy and grace that is extended to us every single day. So may we walk in that place of humility before the Lord every single day. And it's only in this place that we can love our neighbor as ourselves, that we can love our enemies, love those who persecute us, love those who spitefully use us and take advantage of us rather than just loving the people that love us back and loving the people that are kind to us and nice to us, right? That's easy to do, Jesus says, but if we're going to love everyone, then we have to guard ourselves from this prideful heart posture. I hope this ministered to somebody today, and if you're not subscribed, I would truly appreciate it and ask you to hit that thumbs up button. That's the like button. And that tells YouTube to send this video out to more people. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.